Hello, my name is Lawrence Smet. I work in the Maya development team here at Autodesk. And we've heard many questions about how to create great looking play blasts or animation previews. You often see animation previews that look gray like this, and it doesn't really help us tell the story or catch things um, down the line when we get to rendering. So, uh, one thing before we get started, we'll need the Arnold plugin. Um, so you can go up here to Windows Setting Preferences Plugin Manager and make sure it's loaded. You just scroll to the bottom and you should see this M2A Maya 2 Arnold. Make sure it's loaded. So, uh, step one, whenever we're doing any lighting or pretty much anything, we always want to have a photographic reference for the look we're trying to achieve. So I've got this handy picture of Mono Lake in California here at night, and this is the look I'm trying to get when I'm doing my lighting. Um, so in this scene, we have uh, Sven, our protagonist, um, the spaceman, and he's on this alien beach head here, and he's being attacked uh, by this alien robot called the Trilobot. Uh, so let's make this look really cool. Okay, so first things first, let's get some textures going. So I'm going to hit this button here with the checkerboard or hit the 6 key to load textures. And we're going to wait for a little bit. Now, you might get this error, GPU RAM exceeded, texture loading failed, please reduce max texture resolution. Uh, and that's okay. So easy problem to fix. If we go here to the renderer viewport 2, uh, option box and you'll see we have this maximum texture resolution clamping keep that on but you're gonna lower that amount let's just go let's say 1024 and we'll hit reload all textures okay great so now we have some textures uh, we can just check this out let's look through uh, let's say shot cam 1 let's see what we got very cool everybody's looking good Okay, uh, now we need some lighting. So I'm going to go back to my perspective camera. I'm going to hit 7 or hit this uh, light button, and that's going to set us into lighting mode. Um, now, this isn't good. It's black, and this can often happen and be a bit deterring, but uh, it's black because there's no lights in our scene. So let's add a light in our scene. Now, in this case, I'm going to start with my key light. And that's the primary light source in the scene. In this reference, we have the moon. It's very strong. It's a little bit warm. Uh, it's coming from the side. So uh, what we'll do in this case, since we're making a nice scene for Play Blast, we're going to use a spotlight. So this is a standard Maya spotlight. And I'm using this. So there's our spotlight. We can scale it up if you want. Um, I'm using this because it, in, in a large scene like this, I'm going to hit 5 to get out of lighting mode for a sec. When we're dealing with a large scene like this, um, a directional light will give us nice parallel shadows like a sun or a moon, but um, the shadow quality will, will be less. Um, so if we work with a, a spotlight, sorry, let me get the textures and the light going, um, it allows us to constrain the area that is being lit and uh, that maximizes the quality of our shadows. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm focusing the light uh, and I'm going to increase the cone angle and maybe just soften the edges a bit. And so I'm trying to find the area that really that our camera sees. So I'll just flip to my camera, shot cam one, and you can see I'm missing a bit here so I got to adjust that. Um, but for the most part, I'm, I'm covering it, so I've got to expand it out a bit. I'm losing the trilobot here. Um, so I'll just try and cover the area that I need to that the light sees. So maybe I'm going to move this guy over a bit, uh, rotate him to get a little bit more side lighting, and we'll increase our cone angle a bit more. Cool. So the larger that is, the lower quality of the shadows will be. And you also notice we don't have any shadows, so let's just turn shadows on. It's this button up here uh, with the sphere casting a shadow. Cool. Now we have some nice, strong shadows. Uh, they look pretty good. We'll just go through our camera. Um, so, strong shadows. Um, doesn't look too bad, but we can actually improve the quality. So let's make sure we have our light selected. And what I'll do is, just for now, let's do this properly. I'll rename this key light. And I'm going to put this in a group, call that group LGT for my lights, make it easy to find uh, and organized. Cool. So let's go back to our key light. I'm going to go to the light shape. 
and if we want to improve the quality of our shadows here we can turn on this use depth map shadows uh, and that tells Maya now I want some control over my uh, shadow quality rendering in the viewport only this won't affect the render um, and so under resolution we're going to crank this to the max 4096 and we're going to set the filter size to 3, uh, and that will give us a uh, softer edge. If you're getting weird lines in your shadows, if you have a really big scene, uh, you want to adjust the bias. Okay, great. So um, we'll notice this is very bright. So we're going to crank this guy up. And because Maya's color managed in the viewport's color managed, we can really crank this. So don't be afraid to go above 1. So get something like that. And again, looking at my reference, I can see it's a bit warm. I may play with that later based on the look I want. But I'm going to move my hue somewhere around here, just add a touch of warmth in there. It looks pretty good. Okay, now, so this looks great. Obviously, we've got these big black areas we're going to deal with in a second. Um, but already, this is looking a lot more cinematic. This is where this gets really cool. So you might notice uh, in your renders or your uh, play blast or your viewport that colors tend to be a little washed out compared to real life and especially compared to film and that's because the sRGB gamma or linear workflow um, that uh, is common uh, in the industry is um, is based on a standard for the relationship between surface color and light that's uh, has since been improved on quite a bit it's an approximation and you often have to color correct to get something that looks good um, so let's let's fix that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our preferences, so guy running away from the gear here on the bottom right, and we're going to go to the color management settings. Um, now these are the defaults, uh, and what we're going to do is switch away from sRGB to ACES. ACES is a Film Academy standard. Uh, we're going to use ACES CG for rendering space, and the intention for ACES CG uh, and ACES is not only to create a standard across applications for color management, uh, but also to give a better uh, reaction between light and color that's more filmic. So uh, we're going to go to ACES RRT1 in our view transform, make sure apply output transform to play blast is turned on, we'll save that. I highly recommend working this way. It's going to take a little getting used to if you're used to sRGB, but you'll find your lighting will come out a lot better. Okay, so big obvious problem. You know, we don't have these perfect darks. There's a uh, fill light in here, so let's get some fill light in our scene. Uh, and we're going to go to the Arnold uh, shelf here and grab one of these Skydome lights. So we'll turn on the Skydome light. Uh, I'm going to flip over to my perspective view so I can see what I'm doing. You can see it's a bit small, so let's just go to our scale. That's the R button, and expand that out. Okay. And you can see immediately that um, all those scary darks are now nicely filled in, and that's cool. I'll move this guy into my LGT group, and let's get some interesting color. Uh, on our skylight. Now, when I'm lighting and I introduce a new light, I like to just assess what's going on uh, with the one light. So I, I hid Control H, I hid my key light, and I go to my sky dome light, and let's get some color in there. So if I click on the color checkerboard, it allows me to connect a file node that we can use to put in an HDR file. Um, and I've included one here. Uh, we'll use this dry lake bed reduced. Um, in the viewport, you can use a smaller file to load quicker and use up less GPU RAM. So that's handy. And you can see this is bright and sunny, but certainly could pass for day for night with a, a moon. So let's load that up. Okay, cool. This is starting to look a little more interesting. So I'm going to crank up the intensity here. And what we're going for, I'm going to rotate this around. Um, what I'm looking for here is that we use that the sun in here to create some nice highlights on the top of these rocks just to give us a nice feel because we got our key lights separately so we can take advantage of what's in that HDR. I'm going to crank that up a bit more. Cool. We've got our sky dome. Now you'll notice one thing. This looks very flat because our sky dome is not casting any shadows. Um, so let's turn on ambient occlusion or SSAO, Screen Space Ambient Occlusion, up here. We'll hit this button uh, beside our shadow button. Turn that on. And uh, now we have what appears to be shadows from, from our sky dome light. It's really just a trick to get um, shadows in the nooks and crannies. Uh, looks pretty good. And we don't need our, our sky dome in our, our render, so I'm just going to go to the sky dome. 
I'm going to scroll down here to hardware texturing. You may have to pop it open uh, and lower the opacity to zero. So now it's not there anymore and it's not bug enough. And let's turn our key light back on and take a look at where we are. All right, so that's starting to look pretty cool. I'm going to go to my shot camera. Um, we've got some nice shadows, nice lighting. And if we look at a reference, um, it's pretty close. I think I'm actually going to go with a cooler key light here uh, and maybe lower the fill light a bit just to get that same look. So I'll go to my key light. I'm going to make this a little cooler. There we go. Maybe crank that up a bit, get it really bright. Then I'll go to my fill light and I'm going to lower the intensity a bit. There we go. That's giving us something more like our reference and I like that. Okay. Uh, next, I, I'm seeing a lot of competition between the foreground that I want uh, my viewer to see and the background, which is kind of sticking out because it's bright and strong. Um, so what I'm going to do is if I look at my reference, I can see there's some atmospheric haze there. I'm just going to mimic that in the viewport to create some separation. So shading, hardware fog, we'll turn that on and boom, everything's gone. Don't worry. We'll go into the option box here. And you see we have a start and an end. Since this is a big scene, we're going to have to crank out the end here. Let's set it to something like 2000 and push it back and then pull in the start so it moves away from our characters. And what we're looking for is just a little bit of haze and desaturation of our background to create separation. And what I'm going to do is I'm generally going to make that, because it, it looks a bit bright here, I'm going to make it color of my uh, night sky. So. We'll go for that kind of turquoisey, navy blue, uh, dark color, and something like that. And you can see, we can turn it off. You can see the background sticks out. We turn it on, it kind of fades away a bit. So that's it's pretty cool. Okay, uh, last thing, I'm going to address the jaggy. So we see we have some, in, uh, some aliasing happening here, some jagged edges. Um, and if we go into the viewport 2 settings, and we go to anti-aliasing. We can turn on this multi-sample anti-aliasing. You can also get that up here uh, from this button. Now it defaults to 8. If your graphics card can handle it, you can go up to 16 uh, or more, and that will give you a better result. Now, if uh, you run out of GPU RAM at this point and get the same warning we talked about before, uh, there's a couple things you can do. You can um, either disable your floating point render target, which will use less GPU RAM, but also um, degrade your highlights a bit and give you a less realistic result. Or you can try just going down to 16-bit half float mode here, um, and that'll give you a similar result and use less GPU RAM. Uh, but in this case, it works for us, so we're going to keep it. Um, so we'll close that up. So we're ready to play blast, but I want to first check my resolution gate. should always turn this on, this uh, square with the blue circle in it, and see what is in your frame and what's not in your frame. Check to make sure that everything's cool. Um, this resolution gate size is driven by the render settings up here, the clapper with the gear. And if you scroll down, you'll see your render resolution, 1920-1080. Cool. And so last thing, I'm going to trigger a play blast. So, um, we're going to right click on the timeline, go to the options box for play blast. I'm going to make sure that uh, show ornaments is off. And actually, I'm going to disable my resolution gate. I don't want it in my play blast. I just want to see my image. We'll go back. And um, on the Mac, you'll generally use uh, QuickTime H.264. Um, on Windows, uh, QuickTime isn't advisable anymore. So you can either do an image sequence of, let's say, TGA or PNG. Um, but in this case, I'll just do an AVI with uh, uncompressed. And uh, we'll set that to a value of 1 so I get a nice HD image. And we'll set Save to File. Use, it gives us a file already, and we'll hit Play Blast. And thanks to the magic of internet video, uh, we'll flip over to when this is complete. Now, if I want to make a nice compressed video to share with people, I could take this AVI and put it through a video editing application uh, or a compressing program like Handbrake. OK, looks pretty good. But we can see we're losing Sven a bit here as he goes into the shadow. Um, and so this is a great example of where this is a great way to work because right away, even in animation, we see we're going to have a problem. I'll just turn off the hardware fog for a sec there. And so all I'm going to do is grab our light uh, and we'll just move that so that 
make an adjustment so that the shadow uh, is a little bit further behind the rock and we keep spin for longer. Um, I could, of course, adjust my animation, but I wouldn't want to do that. It looks pretty good. And that's really it. So uh, thanks for watching. I would love to see what you guys do with these techniques and with this scene file. Show us your best play blasts. Put a note in the comments. Let us know if you have any questions. And thank you very much for watching.